Okay, Algebra 2 fans, our topic for today is monomial arithmetic. This is the first unit of, or the first topic of our third unit, and this is going to be a review of Algebra 1 concepts. So hopefully as you go through this, you're going to recognize this and remember how to use the rules. Uh, before we start, let me tell you your joke of the day. Did you hear about the mathematician who's afraid of negative numbers? He will stop at nothing to avoid them. Okay, so let's start with a couple definitions here. Monomial, it's an expression that's a variable, number, or product of variables and numbers. So if I take, for example, 3 and I multiply it by x squared, that's a monomial. 5xy to the fourth z. It's one term. Mono means one, so each of these is one term. It could be one half times x, that's still one term. It could just be a number by itself, a constant, 7. It could just be a variable, for example, y. Those are all examples of monomials, okay, and things that we'll be using. The degree is the sum of the exponents of a monomial. So for example, in 3x squared, we say the degree is 2. This is a concept that will be important when we get into polynomial functions. So it's something that we'll talk about here, but we won't do much with until we get to polynomials. x squared, y to the third, z to the sixth. If you add these exponents, the degree is 11. Now I can't combine these terms or these variables. Okay, I can't say that's x to the 11th or y to the 11th. The degree is 11, okay, but that's separate. Um, if you just have x, that's like x to the 1. The degree is 1. If you just have a number like 7, the degree is 0, because that's like x to the 0. Okay, so the rules. Well, we'll start with multiplication. When you multiply monomials, the general rule is you add the exponents. a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. The letter a, in this case, it could be anything, it could be a number or a variable, that is the base. And then the m and the n, those are the exponents, or the powers. So when you multiply variables, if they're the same variable, we copy the base, we keep the base, a, we add the exponents, m plus n. So for example, number one, simplify the following expressions. x to the third times x to the fifth. Well. That's going to be x to the 3 plus 5, which is x to the 8th, and that's it. That's simplified. Now, for a lot of these, you don't really need to show the step where you add it. You just you can do this in your head. The reason why this works, okay, if you don't remember from Algebra 1, x to the 3rd means x times x times x. So I could write it out like this. x to the 5th is x times x times x times x times x. The exponent tells me how many times a number or variable multiplies itself. Now if I write all this out, notice how many x's are multiplying. Well, it's eight of them. Okay, so it's not 8x, but it's x to the eighth right there. But we don't want to have to do this all the time because it takes too much time. So what we do is we add the exponents. So for something like number two, x to the fourth, y to the third, z to the fifth, times x to the eighth, y to the sixth, that's z to the first. I would put the one in there just to remind yourself that there is an exponent. So we've got the x's. You can add the exponents if it's the same variable. When you multiply variables, keep the base, add the exponents. So x to the four plus eight, y to the three plus, that's six, and then z to the five plus one. And then we simplify that, we get x to the 12th, y to the 9th, z to the 6th. And that's it. That's all we can do. For number 3, we're going to multiply this. Now, this is where you can use your commutative property of multiplication. Because we're going to do the 7 and the negative 4, we multiply those together. Now, normally, I wouldn't do this. But just to show you, I take these coefficients, the numbers that multiply the variables, okay, those are called coefficients, 
I multiply those. Okay, this is a multiplication problem. Don't forget that. Now for the variables, x to the 12th times x to the 5th means I add the exponents. I keep the base, add the exponents. And then y to the 9 plus 9. So what we get here equals negative 28, x to the 17th, y to the 18th. And that is as far as you can take it. Okay, so that's one rule. Now the next two rules here, power to a power. If you take an expression, a to the m, and then you raise it to the nth power, this time you multiply the exponents. If you have more than one term in the parentheses, or more than one variable or number, each one of those gets raised to that exponent. So we would say it's a power to a power or the power of a product. So for example, number four, x to the fourth raised to the third. Well, you can think of it as x to the fourth times itself three times. That's what it means to raise something to the third power. And then you would add those and you get x to the twelfth. But the shortcut, the easy way to do it, is just multiply the exponents and you get x to the twelfth. Number five, everything inside gets raised to this exponent. It's almost like distributing to the exponent on the outside. So it becomes x to the two times four, which is eight, y to the seven times four, which is 28, z to the 12 times four, which is 48. Okay, and that's it. That's all you can do. For number six, let's say we have a number inside. That's negative four to the first, x to the fifth, y to the first. So the outside exponent, that two, is going to distribute to all the exponents inside. So this becomes negative four to the second, x to the five times two, which is 10, y to the one times two, which is two. Now when you square a negative, negative four. You can do this in your head. If you choose to use the calculator, make sure you put negative four in parentheses. Okay, you get a positive 16. Don't say that's negative. You're not squaring just the four, you're squaring the negative also. So what we get is 16, x to the 10th, y to the second. And that's as far as you can go. Now, in terms of, can I check this on the calculator? Yeah, actually you can. What we can do here, we could pick values for x and y. For example, something like, let's say five, and then I'm going to hit store. Store is the button STO with the arrow, right here above the on key. Store it, so I store it, and then x, Five stored for X, I hit enter. And then I could take uh, six, store it. So I hit the STO button again. Now this time to get Y, I wanna store it for Y. The variable Y is in green above the number one. There's the Y. So I hit alpha and number one, enter. Okay, now the way that I check this is I type the original problem which was negative four, x to the fifth, y to the second. Parentheses, negative four, x to the fifth, y to the second. Okay, I guess hit y squared. Oh, excuse me, no, 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 the y, close parentheses, now raise that to the second. The exponent is outside. Now it's gonna give me, the calculator is gonna substitute a five for x and a six for y, and it's gonna give me an answer, which is probably gonna be pretty big. Okay, it's huge. Now the question is, is my answer, which was 16x to the 10th, y to the second, is it the same value? Is that gonna be the same value? So, I'm gonna type that. 16x raised to the 10th, y raised to the second. Okay, or I could have just done y squared. If I get the same thing, it tells me that what I've done is right. That my answer is not different 
from this. It looks different, but it's the same value. When you simplify, you don't change the value, you just change the way it looks. Okay, so you could do that all the time to check. Let's do the last two here at the bottom. Number seven, the first set of parentheses, there's no exponent outside. So I'm just going to write this without the parentheses. But the second set of parentheses does have, it's being raised to the third power. So I'm going to have to distribute that outside power to all the inside ones. So that's going to be times 6 to the third, a to the ninth, b to the sixth. Now what I can do, um, negative 1 half times 6 to the third. 6 to the third is 216. So negative 1 half times 216 is negative 108. When I multiply a's, when I multiply the variables, I keep the exponent, sorry, keep the base, add the exponent. So that's 2 plus 9, which is 11. And then this is b to the first times b to the sixth. So keep the base, add the exponents, 1 plus 6 is 7. There we go. And again, I could check it on the calculator. The last one, number 8, there are no exponents outside parentheses. So what we're going to do is just multiply all this together. So I always start with the coefficients. This is a negative 1. Okay, think of that as a negative 1 times negative 4 times 5. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Now we'll go to the variables. So the c's, c to the third, c to the first, c to the first. Add the exponents, c to the fifth. d to the second, d to the fourth, d to the first. Keep the base. Add the exponents, 2 plus 4 plus 1 is d to the seventh. And that is the end of the front of the notes. Okay, so go ahead and flip it over, and for the second part of the video, we will do the back.